billahi min shaitan rajim we seek the protection of God from shaitan who has been expelled from God's kingdom of special mercy Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We humbly turn to God and ask for His guidance because He is the All Perfect One, the All Merciful One, and one whose extra mercy continuously flows abundantly for those who believe in Him and who submit to His will. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa alihi al tahirin. And we send our salutations and greetings on the Holy Prophet and on his holy progeny who are the best guides for mankind till the end of time. Elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We were discussing a brief commentary on the Surah Al Waqi'ah, chapter 56. It's a surah revealed in Mecca, that means in the pre migration period. It has a total of 96 verses. Sequentially, it is reported to be uh, the 44th surah revealed after Surah Taha, chapter 20, and before Surah Shu'ara, chapter 26. Next slide, please. And uh, you recall the thawab and the reward for the recitation of this surah is extraordinary. There's a riwayah from the sixth holy imam who says that Man ishtaqa ila al jannah wa ila sifatiha fal yaqra surat al waqi'ah. You want to appreciate and remind yourself about the paradise and its detailed description? Well, one way to do that is to read this surah. Or another riwayah says that whosoever recites this surah before going to sleep, He shall achieve a degree of self-purification and perfection, which shall then manifest itself in the other world in such a way that when he meets his Lord and when the truth comes out, he shall, his face, whereas everywhere else there'll be darkness, there will be no source, source of light, except that source which a person creates for himself beforehand. And if darkness represents falsehood, darkness a metaphor for false beliefs or false character or evil actions, this person's character and belief and actions shall be so bright and so good that they shall shine out like the moon in the dark night. Next slide, please. The other riwayah which says that the Holy Prophet said, whoever recites this surah once every night, Lam tusibhu afatun wala faqa. He shall not be afflicted either by poverty or any other misfortune. Or this uh, fourth riwayah by the sixth holy imam which says that whosoever recites this surah, Ahabbahullah, Allah will love him and therefore will bless him. Wahhabbahu ila nas and Allah will make him popular in people's hearts. Because somehow this surah would bring about a change in this character of the reciter. Bring him closer to God, bring him closer to goodness, A. People are, are created in such a way that naturally they are attracted towards goodness and spirituality, B. Therefore necessarily the reciter with understanding of this surah will be lovable and desirable in people's eyes. Next slide, please. You recall we went through a brief outline of the whole surah. It says we can divide it into six uh, sections. Section one is the introduction, ayah number one to six. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ida waqatil waqia. Remember the time when this momentous event shall occur, which is global. There is nothing that can deny the truth and the reality of this event. Once it occurs, it will be so pervasive, it will be overwhelming. Nobody will be able to resist. It will, it will uh, change all the um, value systems. Those who th were considered to be high shall be now found to be actually lowly. And those who were thought by other people to be lowly will turn out to be truly very high people. The value systems will change. 
إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء منبثا. When this event occurs, a lot of changes will occur. But instead of listing all the changes, two big changes are listed and mentioned. One is to the earth and second is to the mountains. The whole earth will shake. Massive shake. إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها. And one of the most solid structures that you can imagine, the mountains. Even the mountains will crush and crumble and disappear. What more can you expect? What more massive a change can you expect? Paragraph 2. So after these physical massive uh, global changes, what will be the end result for the human beings on the earth? Paragraph 2, I number 7 and 10. وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا You shall be then categorized into three groups. The truth will come out. The inner reality shall manifest itself. فَأَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَ وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَ وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ They shall be the people of the right hand, those who are righteous. And what can make you understand the high status of these people? And there'll be people of the left hand, those who are the wicked or the evil doers. And what can make you appreciate how lowly and degraded this group will be? Left here as a metaphor for evil. Otherwise, uh, a mu'min doesn't have a left hand in this sense. A mu'min, both his hands are right. A kafir doesn't have a right hand. Both his hands are left. Both hands of Allah are right. Yadullahi mabsutatan. The hands of God, both of them are stretched out in generosity. The riwayah says, Kilta yadayhi yameen. Both the hands are right. Right as a symbol of righteousness. Left as a metaphor for evil and wickedness. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ But beyond those who are righteous, there'll be those who are absolutely foremost and perfect in their actions, in their character, and most important in their thoughts and feelings and beliefs. And then um, from I number 11 to I number 56, there's description of the reward for each of these three, three groups. First, the muqarrabun, I number 11 to I number 26. فالسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم. So a list of rewards for the مقربين and the سابقين is mentioned. على سرور موضونة متكئين عليها متقابلين. Number two يطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون. Number three بأكواب وأباريق وكأس من معين لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون. Number four وفاكهة مما يتخيرون. Number five ولحم طير مما يشتهون. Number six وحور عين كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون جزاء بما كانوا يعملون. Number seven لا يسمعون فيها لغوا this is the spiritual pinnacle of the rewards that shall be given to them. And all global uh, comprehensive peace and harmony and calm and composure. In contrast, Number one, Number six, And number seven, yamin. We've already discussed uh, uh, these rewards. Oh, <laughs> I've okay. I've missed one slide in between. The th the third group is ashabu shimali, ma ashabu shimal. For them, there are seven types of punishment. Fi samumin wa hamimin wa zillin min yahmum and. Uh, they shall have uh, 
آكلون من شجر من زقوم فمالئون منها البطون فشاربون عليه من الحميم فشاربون شرب الهيم هذا نزلهم يوم الدين. This is the punishment reserved for the أصحاب الشمال. We've discussed that. In the third par, in the next paragraph, can you go back to the previous slide? Previous, previous slide. Yes. Now, paragraph number four, ayah number fifty-seven to ayah number thirty-four now discusses the proof why qiyama must be there. You see, the major objection that was raised by Ashabu Shimal was that the, uh, the description given in the previous verses was that innahum kanu qabla thalika mutrafin wa kanu yusirrun ala al-hinth al-azim. These people were those who were living a luxurious lifestyle which, which led them to excessiveness in such a way that they didn't bother about how they acquired their wealth, about the hoarding, about not sharing, and about using it extravagantly. To an extent that this wealth, wealth as a symbol, but basically any ni'mah can also do the same. It can intoxicate a person. The end result was they said that وَكَانُ يَقُولُونَ أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثُونَ And they would say, disobedience is now leading to doubt. Doubt is leading to denial. When we die, is it true? And once we decay and disappear, we're going to be resurrected back to life? Is it true? Then what about our forefathers? We haven't seen anything. That was a brief response. Definitely, you shall be assembled. Now, the detailed response is given to that objection, the doubt and the denial. Why do you, den why do you deny? Well, there are seven proofs now being mentioned, beginning from ayah number 57. <laughs> Proof number one. What is your problem? We are the ones who created you. In Surah Tur, the challenge is, um, A, did you create yourself? No answer given. Did this create itself by chance? Three, did you create everything else? The answers to all these three questions are obvious and axiomatic. No, it's impossible for me to create myself. When I'm not there and I'm nothing, how can nothing make something? If I'm already there, who am I trying to create? I'm already there. Can I create myself? It's impossible because before I create myself, either I'm there or I'm not there. If I'm not there, how can nothing make something? If I'm already there, what am I trying to make? I'm already there. We have created you. There is no denial of this. Nobody can deny it. It's a fundamental, axiomatic truth. You've been created. Why do you then not acknowledge and accept and recognize this basic fact? Why do you uh, deny? Why do you avoid? Why do you doubt? The same power that could create it, the f that could create you the first time, therefore, by implication, has the power to create you a second time. This is the same answer given in Surah Yasin, where. Uh, well, the وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ And he makes a drama before us and he crushes the bone and then he says, who will bring this back to life, this powder? It's impossible. And the answer is, قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً The first time he created you from nothing or from other ingredients, but the same power obviously can recreate. This is the same argument. Um, so notice, the response is logical, and a question is being asked, but no answer is given. Because the answer is very clear. Why don't you accept the reality? Next slide. Proof number two. All right, so you find it a little difficult to accept this philosophical, logical argument on self-introspection. You should be able to figure it out. All right, let's make you think about certain physical phenomena. Think about them and see, uh, does God have the power to do it or not? Do you see this mani? 
in which you ejaculate. That's all you can do. You can just transfer it to the receptacle, period. Beyond that, أَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلُقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْخَالِقُونَ Are you the one, once the seed is planted in the receptacle, who then enables that seed to grow from a single cell to double, double to quadruple, quadruple then to eight, eight to sixteen, sixteen onwards to till millions and billions? A human body is supposed to have trillions of cells, trillions. We all started from one. أَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلُقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْخَالِقُونَ Are you the one who enables this process of development? Or we are the ones who guide it? Uh, next slide, please. We've already uh, been uh, through these, uh, uh, these stages before. You recall when we were discussing Surah Qiyamah, and the argument then was that... Uh, أَلَمْ يَكُنْ نُطْفَةً مِنْ مَنِيٍّ يُمْنَى ثُمَّ كَانَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقَ فَسَوَّى فَجَعَلَ مِنْهُ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى This was Surah Qiyamah. The same argument is being made in this ayah also. So you start off with one cell, the sperm meeting the egg. Next. And then quickly the single cell begins to divide after fertilization to a double and then a quadruple stage and then an eight cell stage and onwards to hundreds of cells and then uh, the cell begins to uh, differentiate itself into different layers now. These are different stages of uh, development. Next, that was a, a two-dimension figure. This is a three-dimension image. Within three days, no, 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 no. You're, you're <laughs> Within three days of fertilization, the division begins, in fact, even in the tube. And I said one way of imagining the tube is, imagine this kanzu I'm wearing, and I've stretched out my hands. Uh, that's the tube. And those are the fronds that cover the ovary. Every month, the egg hatches, and the uh, gentle movement of the fronds of the tube capture it and the egg travels. If during this time there is conception, then the sperm meets the egg in the tube and over 24 hours, 36 hours, division begins. Within 36 hours, division has already advanced to uh, several cell stage and it continues at the rate of twice a day. 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 8, 8 becomes 16. And it travels about 10 centimeters of the tube till it enters the cavity of the uterus uh, in 3 to 4 days time. Next slide please. Within 5 days it's a 100 cell cluster. Now it's floating in the u uterus. It's not yet implanted in the inner wall of the uterus. A day or two later, then the implantation takes place. Next slide. Within a month, now you have uh, an embryo which has certain parts of the body beginning to differentiate. Now you have a head end and a tail end and some buds of the limbs, upper limbs and lower limbs. And there's a heart which is hidden behind the right upper limb. But the size, notice the size, is hardly five millimeters one month. But the number of cells that have already multiplied is in millions or, or, or billions. Next. Now within eight weeks, it's 30 millimeters, but this is one view. There's another view. Next. That's a better side profile. Next. And by 12 weeks, four, four months, three months, it's now almost recognizable as a human fetus. Do you set in motion the processes which will then enable the division to take place? And once the divisions has have produced multiple cells, that these cells should now differentiate. And then they should form layers, and layers should form tissues, and tissues should form organs, and organs should form systems. Do you guide the process? Or we are the ones who have set up a system, a biological, chemical, physical law 
laws which are run from the spiritual world by the angels and they're the ones who then determine the process of development. Next slide. Proof number three. So, one, we have the power. Two, you were doubting about our power. Look at this physical phenomena of the process of development. Proof number three. Nahnu qaddarna baynakumul al-mawta. You have doubt that there is going to be qiyamah or not. We have the power or not. Well, consider the phenomenon of death. We have decreed and imposed upon you, and you're helpless, powerless to accept it. We have decreed, نَحْنُ قَدَّرْنَا بَيْنَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Look at you, mankind. Amongst you, this phenomenon of death is prevalent. You can't avoid it. You're helpless. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُوقِينَ Nobody can have become sabiq and we become masbuq. He overpowers and we become overpowered. Rather, we are the ones who decree and you are helpless. عَلَىٰ أَن نُبَدِّلَ أَمْثَالَكُمْ وَنُنْشِئَكُمْ فِي مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ We have the power. We cannot be overpowered to replace you. You go and leave in your place. Somebody else comes and lives. This house is going to be inherited by somebody else else after some period of time. That's how, that's how replacement goes on. وَنُنْشِئَكُمْ فِي مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And we then recreate you, once you leave this physical world, into that other realm, in that other world. We recreate you, but you don't know the details. Uh, what laws govern that world? What shapes and forms you shall assume? Uh, what will be the circumstances there? You don't know the details. So, نَحْنُ قَدَّرْنَا بَيْنَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Death is not by chance, it's by choice. Somebody chooses when we die. Of course, you can't argue by saying, well, I can commit suicide whenever I want. The argument is, the freedom to commit suicide is God-given, number one. And number two, you think you're exercising that right and you're free. And you're using that right to, I don't know, well, you want to escape uh, depression in this world and trouble in this world and go somewhere else. But you know what? Once you die, it's not the end of the story. It's the beginning of a new story. And once you go there, it's the beginning of new troubles for you. So suicide is not going to solve your problem. It's going to create new problems for you. You think you're smart? Well, I can control death. You can't. We are the ones who decree death, not because we are helpless, we are powerless, we cannot sustain and maintain life in this physical earth, or oh, we can, but for higher purposes, for higher goals, we have decreed that death is a must. Not that we can't continue to sustain life. We have decreed, it's our decree, it's our decision, it's our plan. This is how we've designed the universe accordingly to accommodate you for a few years on, in the earthly life. Next slide, please. Uh, well, this is just a graphic demonstration. You can have friends, you can have relatives who may be intense in their grief and sorrow. They don't want to miss you, but they can't do anything to stop the process of death. Robbing him away. Next slide, please. Proof number four. So number one, we're powerful. You have doubts about our power? Look at the physical process of a human development of the emperor to the fetus to the full uh, human. You have doubt in our power? Look at death. Proof number four. لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ النَّشْأَةَ الْأُولَىٰ فَلَوْلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ You have doubts about uh, the necessity of qiyamah and life after death. You do believe there is a God. One. Two. You do believe that this God is perfect. Three. If God is all perfect, definitely He is all wise. Four. An all wise God will not act in a way that would indicate uh, purposelessness. لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ النَّشْأَةَ الْأُولَىٰ Look at this wonderful creation. In the Qur'an, it is taken for granted that the mushrikeen did believe in God. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَىٰ Surah An-Kabut, Surah Luqman, chapter 29, chapter 31. لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ You ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they're not going to deny there's a creator. They believe they're in intermediaries 
to reach the Creator, but they do believe there is a Creator. They will most definitely say Allah is the one who has created. Well, if you do believe in Allah, one, therefore He's all perfect, two, by definition, therefore He's all wise, three, therefore necessarily He is not going to act purposelessly, four, and therefore this whole wonderful creation with all these facilities and with all these gifts given to you was for what? So you come here just for uh, a few years and that's all? It's something like um, <laughs> you, you, you pass by a desert and you have a five-star hotel waiting there for you because you're going to come there for five minutes and you want to rest and then you go away. It doesn't make sense. It's a waste of resources. You can't have this wonderful creation created with a degree of precision and accuracy which continues to amaze even the best of scientific minds and still technology has not yet been able to discover everything. The problem is this light. How much can we know about this universe? It's all determined by the speed of light. The last edge of the universe depends on how fast light can travel from there till here. If light could travel faster, I could see even beyond. But the problem is light doesn't travel faster. I'm stuck, basically. I don't know what exists out there in its totality. This wonderful creation is there all just for the sake of me to come here for one minute. To live for 100 years in a universe which has been there for 15 billion years is less than even a minute. Why don't you just ponder and reflect? Is it possible for an all-wise God to do all this? Oh, the same ayah can be interpreted to mean no. You see signs of uh, creation everywhere and resurrection everywhere. Why do you doubt the possibility of recreation? There are several surahs uh, in the Qur'an, several verses where the, uh, the phenomena of spring and life after uh, death is discussed, uh, life after uh, vegetable death. So for example, chapter 22, Surah Hajj, ayah number 5 and ayah number 6. وَتَرَ الْأَرْضَ هَامِدَةً if they have doubt about the possibility of life after death, tell them to consider this phenomena of the spring season. Before spring season, they see the earth is dead with no plantation, no vegetation growing. وَتَرَ الْأَرْضَ هَامِدَةً فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ But when we send down water on it, it has set. It begins to stir and to move. Why? Because something inside the earth is beginning to grow. It's going to bud out. It has set. وَرَبَتْ It begins to grow. وَأَنْبَتَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيج Next slide, please. So, in the uh, summer and uh, the hot season, the trees are going to be dead. But then when water comes down, suddenly you find the dead earth beginning to stir, one, and then to grow everywhere, two, no, to produce beautiful vegetation and plants. Next slide, please. <laughs> Before the spring season, this would have been uh, uh, an autumn season where everything falls, in winter everything is dead, and then once the water comes, it stirs back to life. Next slide, please. I, uh, proof number five. So we have the power one. Are you in doubt? Look at the physical phenomena of the human development in the womb. You have doubt? Look at the process of death. You have doubt? Well, look at the, uh, the wisdom in this wonderful creation. You have doubt? Consider the process of germination. Proof number five. Well, have you uh, considered this phenomena of the farmer sowing some seeds in the ground? 
antum tazra'unahu am nahnu zari'un are you the ones who enable this seed which has been planted to germinate to grow to produce a, a root and a shoot and then the shoot comes out of the ground and then you have the stem and the branches and the leaves and the fruits are you the one who does all that antum tazra'unahu am nahnu zari'un uh, next slide, please. Next. All you do is just plant the seed, but the seed is structured in such a way that it starts producing a root and then a shoot. Next slide, please. Uh, with the different types of seeds that have different types of production of the, of the root. Uh, and uh, Can we come back to the previous slides, please? Yes. Oh well, uh, this is how things work. I mean, I'm the one who who, who uh, plows the field, and I'm the one who irrigates the the field, and I'm the one who puts the fertilizer, and I'm the one who removes the weeds, and I'm the one, and I'm the one. Or oh, is that the case, really? Well, wait a minute. Wait. Second argument. Launa shau, lajalnahu hutama. We have the power at every moment and at every step of the process of germination till full growth to arrest it, to reverse it, to destroy it. You come back, you have finished the whole day's work, the whole season's work, and now you're just waiting for the harvesting. You go back to the field, it's gone. There was a frost, there was a drought, there was a rain, there was a storm. You imagine any of those physical overwhelming phenomena, it's gone. The same argument which is in Surah Yasin. لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَسَخْنَاهُمْ عَلَى مَكَانَتِهِمْ لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَطَمَسْنَا عَلَى أَعْيُنِهِمْ Here, لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعَلْنَاهُ حُطَامًا فَظَلْتُمْ تَفَكَّهُونَ You know your immediate response when you see all your efforts disappear because of one storm, one hurricane, one cyclone. The Middle East, have you ever heard of a cyclone coming there? Go no! Oh my God! <laughs> they were scared, and the Hurricane Katrina taught us that the hurricane can be approaching one state, and suddenly, the last moment, changes direction. Inna nahnu la mughramun tu gharama. Everything is gone. Bal nahnu mahrumun. Everything is gone. You think you have the power? Well, how many examples should we give you about your powerlessness and helplessness? The hurricane was detected, Katrina. It was monitored. The way it was growing, the direction which was moving, they were just watching helplessly. Satellite images, that's all. You couldn't do anything more. In fact, forget satellite images. When it struck with its full ferocity, mobile technological communication broken down. There was a blackout. You don't know what's happening out in the field. When it strikes, it blinds. It blinds the eyes, it deafens the ears. Next slide, please. Proof number six. So, we have the power. Do you doubt life after death? We have the power. You have a problem with this? Well, consider the physical phenomena of fetal development. No, consider the power of death. No, consider the fact that our wisdom will not allow us to be purposeless. No, consider the process of germination. No, consider another example. Proof number six. Simple example. You don't need to be a complicated, sophisticated scientist, philosopher. But you do drink water, don't you? Why well, don't you consider this water? Where did you get this water from? You made it yourself? Oh, really? There are planets out there and planets and planets. There's not a drop of water out there and there's no life. You made this water? You brought it down from the clouds? 
أم نحن المنزلون ولو نشاء جعلناه أجاجا if we want we can make it very salty very bitter to the taste أجاج is derived from the word burning it can burn you once it enters your system فلولا تشكرون then why don't you appreciate your powerlessness and therefore a merciful Lord who is providing for everything next slide please the water cycle uh, has different uh, parts. The, the fact that the earth is covered with water and then through the process of evaporation part of the water rises up and then clouds are formed, condensation takes place and then in certain areas they precipitate and come down in the form of rainfall. The volumes involved are massive, massive. Next slide please. So from the oceans, 97% uh, of the water on the earth is in the oceans. 70% of the uh, surface of the earth is water. 97% of the water on the earth is in the oceans. A large portion of the water is also trapped in the fresh water. This is salty water. Fresh water is trapped in the polar ice caps. So through the process of evaporation from the salty water, from the rivers, from the lakes, from the plants, it evaporates. You're talking about thousands of, uh, not liters, you don't calculate in the form of liters, you calculate in the form of cubic kilometers. <laughs> Every day, every day it's happening, even from the desert. It, it, it evaporates, the sun drives that uh, process, and then the droplets in the atmosphere, depending on the temperature, form clouds, and the clouds by the wind moves them to particular areas, and then they precipitate and fall down either as snow pellets or as hail or as rain or as storms, whatever. And if it's in very high uh, altitudes, it'll, it'll come down as snow and remain as snow on the mountains, or lower down, it'll melt and come down as water, either the river or collect in a lake or come down to the ocean. If a people don't deserve to be given water, the clouds will take a full circle and come back. They will not deposit their water inland. They'll come back to the ocean and drop it back to the ocean. Allah determines who to give what and when and how much and why. So the question, oh you deny this power. You think you have the power? Well, why don't you bring water down? Incidentally, technology has yet failed to seed the clouds to uh, begin the process of uh, rain. Um, next slide, please. Finally, the last proof. You doubt and you deny the possibility of life after death? Well, we have the power. You want more examples? Consider the fetal development. You want more examples? Consider the fact that death, you have no control over it. You want more examples? Consider the fact that God is all wise. You want more examples? Consider the example of water. And consider the example of the seed as it germinates. And finally, number seven, fire. أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ النَّارَ أَلَّتِي تُورُونَ Look at the simple phenomena of fire that you lit up in your travels in the desert. How did you create this fire? You take two stones and you create friction from that heat. You expect fire. Stones will not burn. Sorry. <laughs> you want to create fire, you need wood. Where did this wood come from? From the tree. Did you create that tree? Or we are the ones who created the tree in such a way that it has the capacity to be able to take the energy from the sun and store it in such a way that on a later date with friction you inflame it, ignite it, and the energy is released in the form of flames and heat and light. Next slide. Simple phenomena. A matchstick with the cap. 
where these igniting elements, inflammable elements are there. Just a minor creation, a minor friction, it creates, it makes it combustible and uh, it inf it's inflammable then. Next slide. Or obviously it can, it can happen. These trees, the reason they burn is because they have stored energy uh, from, the, from the sun and now it's being released when the friction sets up the process. قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ خَلْقٍ عَلِيمٍ أَلَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوْقِدُونَ Do you deny the power of God to give life after death? But look at this green tree. You would think it's green and full of life. Yet from the same green tree, Allah can create a new form of energy. It's stored, it's hidden, and you don't realize it. When it's ignited, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوْقِدُونَ And then the, 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 you'll have to go back one, two slides because there's a conclusion. نَحْنُ جَعَلْنَاهَا تَذْكِرَةً وَمَتَاعًا لِلْمُقْوِينَ This fire, this ability of trees to have the characteristic of being able to burn and provide light and heat and therefore advanced technology, the civilization, human civilization is supposed to have advanced when they discovered the method of lighting fire. Allah says this is a gift given to mankind, uh, a ni'mah. The Prophet ﷺ would not read these verses uh, just intellectually. Intellectually, the arguments are sound. But then in order for these ideas to be introduced in our lives, we need to experience it, we need to uh, realize it, we need to practice it. And therefore the Prophet, for example, whenever he would drink water, after drinking water, immediately that ayah would say that أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ He would make a dua out of that. الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي سَقَانِي عَذْبًا فُرَاتًا بِرَحْمَتِهِ وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْهُ أُجَاجًا I praise the Lord that He has enabled this water to reach me and to quench my thirst. He could have made it very um, bitter or very salty and burning, ujaj. You see, the process of evaporation somehow has been designed in such a way that when the sun energy reaches the ocean, it's pure water which evaporates, not with the minerals contained in the ocean. What if it went up with those minerals? What if when it came down the minerals didn't stay up or in the mountains? You would have imagined, you could have imagined the the brackishness of the water we would have. You, I don't know if you've stayed in desert climates, but uh, sometimes there is this problem whereby the only source of water is the one that's there from the desert. And the taste is terrible, terrible. Um, we have to get used to it. Let's pray to Allah to get the tawfiq, to be able to uh, develop the habit of reflection. Simple daily examples should make us realize these are physical events, but there's a spiritual side to it. There's a connection to the akhirah also. And accordingly, let's interact and react and therefore prepare for the akhirah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes. Uh, since this is a system that has been put in place by Allah. Yes, uh, yes. Natural system. Right. And when pollution will be considered uh, going against uh, the natural system of Allah. Willing. Uh, pollution, pollution, yes. Pollution has got two aspects to it. One is. Uh, one is the unavoidable part of it. I mean, a person has to die, his body will putrefy, you bury it, it'll decay, it'll smell, it's rot. That's a natural process, it has to happen. You have to burn fuel to, uh, to get heat and light in the olden times and now from our appliances. 
What is not acceptable is the excessive usage in such a way that now you become careless about the effect that it is going to have on the environment or nature. That is uh, that is condemned. So notice the uh, the Quran says that. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ أَلَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ Allah has given gifts. There's nothing wrong in using those gifts in a proper way. And proper way means being in moderation. It's the excessive extravagant use that is condemned. One. Two. In the Quran also in Surah Zab, chapter 33, ayah number 72. Allah says, we've given a lot of gifts to man. However, man misuses them. And the reason for that is, The problem with him is either he's ignorant, or no, 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 he knows the effects, but he's arrogant, he's greedy. So if we do it in moderation, pollution is natural, it has to happen, and the system is created in such a way that it self-purifies. In the open, when an animal dies, you have scavengers who will come and eat up every last drop. Different scavengers will come and eat up different parts. And finally, once the big scavengers are gone, you'll have tiny scavengers and microscopic ones. They'll finish up everything. That's the natural purification system that exists in the universe. Allah is ghafoor, not only towards man, towards nature is ghafoor. He has set in place a system that washes away the dirt. Yes, sorry. Yes. Everything is controlled by us. Right. Okay. Yes, yes. What is the reason for operation? Okay. Just trying to think of a short, quick answer. There's a detailed answer to that. Um, hmm. The different reasons, but consider one. <coughs> He's the one who's created life and death. You mentioned these two examples, right? Who is the one who created life and death? He's the one who creates life, he's the one who creates death, and he's the one who tests in between life and death. So that the potentials and the faculties that are given to you, you will be then tested. To actualize your and a test from God is not that he comes to know something that he doesn't know and he would only know through the process of testing. Testing here is to enable you to uh, realize the God-given potential. He's created this universe in such a way that you, by your own free choice, should be able to achieve perfection. And after you achieve that perfection, he then rewards you with eternal blessings. Instead of creating you like an angel who, without choice, obeys robotically, he is, and, and there is no, there is no uh, limit to the number of angels he has created. In the عند ربهم لا يستكبرون عن عبادته. There are creatures who are close to God and they never tire and fatigue from worshiping Him. The universe is filled, overfilled, with creatures who are permanently obeying Him and worshiping Him. But there's a small part of the universe the solar system, small part of the solar system, the earth, small creation there, man. He's been given a little freedom. 
this vast universe as an expression of God's unlimited power and knowledge and wisdom and mercy is being introduced to you and then you're being told grow up, mature, reflect, realize, aspire, come closer. The closer you get, the more I'll give. I won't give it free. You have to work for it. There's no limit to what he can give. The question is, how much can you ask? So, he is a creator full of creativity. Constantly creating, giving, generously, abundantly. He's given so much to those near him. But lower down, he's also saying, I'm ready to give. But on one condition, free choice. Choose and you shall be granted. The purpose of creation of man is Allah is expressing himself. He's overflowing with love and mercy. He wants you to also achieve that love and mercy, but by choice and not by force. Yes, please. That's correct. Because because by choice, when you have to make a choice of a lifestyle that would ensure that you will achieve perfection, one of the best choices you can make is to worship Him. Kwanini, kusababu in worship, what you do is you devote your whole being, your love, your praise, your thanks, your obedience, your fear, your hope, your begging, everything, everything towards this goal. If all your Jannah and Jahannam is this dunya, the wonderful life I create my, for myself, this is my Jannah. All the little, little trials and tribulations and misfortunes I face on the earth, this is my Jahannam. Once you lower your goal, accordingly you get deviated. But if you raise your goal, whereby your energies, all the energies that God has given you, your physical, your emotional, your spiritual, your intellectual, Actual, all the different talents he has given. When you focus them towards a goal which is unlimited in perfection, that is the best way to use the freedom of choice to enable the perfection to be achieved. Otherwise, you can begin to worship other things also. There is no man, there is no man but that he worships. Alam a'ahad ilaykum ya bani adama alla ta'abud the shaitan. There are some who are making ibadah of shaitan. In the sense that they follow him. He becomes the commander. They totally obey. There are some who make ibadah of the dunya. There are some who make ibadah of their nafs. Afara'ayta man ittakhatha ilaha hu hawahu. Surah Zukhruf or in Surah Najm, Allah says, Have you seen those people who take as their gods their own nafs? It's my desire. It's my wish. This is what I'm going to follow. Nobody can tell me what to do. So there is no one but that he worships. Question is, what? What do you worship? What's your object of worship? Well, Allah says the best object of worship is the most perfect one, Allah. Let's pray to Allah to get the tawfiq, to be able to constantly read this surah and then revive the spirit of ibadah and of course the remembrance of akhirah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.